it's Monday. It's time for another art throwdown. And we're back. We're back for another week of crafts and the usual weekly hijinks every Monday through Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern. All the usual crafts and hijinks and banter. Here we go. Speaking of banter, here comes Russ. Hey, guys. All right. I'm waving to everybody. Hey, guys. He's kind of here. I see him. He's spinning. He's spinning. Hey. Can you hear me okay? Hey. 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 I can hear you fine. Oh, okay. You were lagging for three seconds, five seconds, I don't know, something like that. Hey, guys. But um, loud. Was I spinning? Yeah. Spinning you this, round and round you and round. You have this little wheel, and it's like, and it spins. And I'm like, I'm not sure what this means, but um, I think you're okay now. Well, it's so funny because it's it shows fine on mine, so... As long as you can hear me, I mean, that's what matters, right? Oh, it's all about you. Yep, absolutely. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Oh, gosh. And as it so happens, um, I have stamps too, you know. You're not the only one around here with a stamp. But mine are a little different. So you guys are going to see how my stamps are a little different than Russ's homemade creation here. So... Are we carving tonight? Like, is that the plan? We are. That's the plan. And I'm well, I admire your I admire your boldness and your courage. Yeah. I would be yeah. like, <laughs> it's too yeah, much pressure. Wa- yeah, we're gonna watch me fail. No, don't uh, say that. Don't pro- do not prophesy that. Don't prophesy yeah. that. <laughs> uh, let's see. We have Phil. We have Jim. We have Raleigh, uh, and three others have joined. So I think that is. Nick and Nan and Ashley and Manda and Frank. Frank, thank Frank. you. Frank is here. Swan four four four. Yes. Mm-hmm. Swan is here. Hello. Uh, Jennifer is here. Well, first of all. Uh, if you haven't listened to the current episode of the postcardist podcast. It is a great listen. So go do that now. Uh, it features our, our friends, um, uh, Jess and her daughter, Charlie, who many of us have been sending postcards to over time. And it's just uh, a delightful, sweet episode. Uh, and it just makes you feel good all over and, uh, and gives me some, uh, hope for the future so let's say that cool so if you haven't listened to that yet listen go listen to frank in the postcards podcast uh, he's almost up to 80 episodes which is just absolutely amazing um and that is amazing so, that's quite an accomplishment yeah that's, it is that is a heck of it a is. lot of digital content that is oodles of content yeah so my hat's yeah. off to you frank that's a yeah lot of absolutely all right so Excuse me, I'm yawning in your in your ears, but uh, Lisa's here. Welcome. Hello. So. So, you how was your weekend? How was your how, how was your Fourth of July? It was wild. I went up to the Uh-oh. north I, in a good way. In a good way, I went up to the North Country of New York State and um, ran around the country and ate ice cream at like a place that makes their ice cream direct from a farm because there's a dairy farm next door to it like like super rural experience and um no it was like back to my old roots it was good it was good you know what i will say is the rural small town fourth of july is probably one of the best experiences uh in the u.s a lot of fireworks um i mean that everybody was lighting them off just yeah just local parades and you know all that kind of stuff and it just really is charming no, you know? no parades though, unfortunately, this year. But um, you know, everybody was out. You know, it was kind of interesting. Like everybody did their own thing, and so a lot of the neighbors were just doing their own little barbecues, and it was kind of like, 
like this block party, but like everybody was kind of dispersed and everybody had their own little festivity going on all at once. And then every so often someone would light fireworks up off the end of their driveway. And it was, it was almost like it was in surround sound. It was kind of cool. So it was definitely a different experience um, for 4th of July that um, compared to what I'm usually used to. Usually the family goes and we sit on the blanket and we're out and, you know, under the stars and watching the fireworks. But um, it was definitely a different experience, but not by no, by no means a bad one. It was just good to be with family. So. Which is different. Yeah. Yeah. We, just, we made the best of it. So uh, no regrets. No regrets. It was good. It was good. And I see you're back at home because I recognize your background. So I'm in my usual kitchen area. Yes, I am. Yeah. Yes, I am. And good to hear. I got to go and? to antique shows. It was really awesome. There's a couple of um, antique markets that were open, um, but usually um, this is like northern upstate, upstate. And um, there were some of the bigger shows this year that got canceled, and a lot of people were bummed about that. But there was one place that opened a Sunday market. So now every Sunday they have a bunch of vendors and dealers that kind of space out, and they get out underneath these big pole barns and pavilions, and you just you just go and you antique. So it's cool. And um I actually got what I'm about to use. I got there. So you guys are going to see my cool uh, goodies that I bought. And um, it's going to be a little experiment tonight. Um, oh, show us, show us, show yeah. us, show us. So I was at this antique show. And this lady had boxes of these stamps, okay? Old school, old school, old school stamps. Turns out um, her father worked at a printing press so he did um you know newsprint he did business cards you know just old school printing process and um, these are not rubber stamps these are um they've got they're on mounted on the wooden blocks uh, but these are copper and lead and um, my plan this evening was to try to take some of these and um ink them up and um, see how they do. So that's my experiment for tonight to see how these old school stamps work. So those, those are cool. I have old uh, printing blocks like that as well. Where'd you um, find yours? I got them on eBay. Okay. I, like I said, I've never seen anything like this before. And like they had all manner of different stamps and like, you could tell that these were the things that old printing presses would have used in old school flyers or newspaper print. And um, just, I, I, right. I fell in love with them as soon as I saw them. I'm like, I must have these. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, that, um, so my Joe, uh, my Archer, because they have impression. So, I may be going in and out, phasing in and out, because my screen just keeps on um, pixelating. So I don't know if that's my signal. Um, so just be wary that I will still be here if I should get lost. Okay. I need to go run and grab my ink remover from upstairs. Um, I've got one of those little daubers. So I will be right back because I did forget that. But um, I'll be back in one minute. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Be right back. While she is away, I am going to share with you some materials that I have. Um, this is the printing block that um, I'll be using. Uh, this is Speedball's Speedy Stamp. It is a 4x6 carving block. So, um, no, it's it's. I'm just pixelating. It's my signal because I can actually hear my voice as well um so i think that's what's going on I'm, i've got a bad signal i may have to go off and come back on um so this is the speedball speedy stamp um i got this uh on ebay i'm sorry uh on amazon and so uh that is what i am carving and then that was the design that I showed you. And then this is the speedball 
carving set. Uh, you can use this. Uh, they sell this as the Lino Cut Linoleum Block uh, Set. And you can see Speedball there. And what, so it comes with this handle. It comes with this chalk. Okay. Um, and then in the handle are all the different blades. And so this is the the shallow blade. And then you have a thicker blade. And these all have numbers on them, so uh, you know which one that you're using. So, for example, this is a number two. This one was the number one. And this is the real deep V. Uh, this is the number four. Uh, and then this is the repeat, I think. Oh, this is the number th number five. And it comes with this one as well. And this is just like a little knife. Okay, so that is the set that comes with this handle. That reminds so, me of the knife that I keep seeing on Instagram as a... And, and don't ask me like what algorithm like is now following me, but... There's a tiny knife that you could wear as a necklace, and I guess it cuts a, it's like a functional cutting knife, but it's like this big. Anyway, sidebar. So um, I am going to put these back in the handle. That's where they're stored. And I'm going to keep two of them out. And the end just screws on, and that's where you hold the extra blades. Well, that's handy. So it all stores up there on the handle, eh? It does. It hmm. does. And then to put in the blade, you just open the chalk or chuck. Sorry. Sophia loves postcards is joined. Welcome. Hey there. And then you just insert. Well, make sure you insert the right edge, <laughs> the right end. Uh, so righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. And it just slots in, and then you close it to secure it, and you are good to go. So now, why did you have to get an ink remover? I'm confused. An ink remover? Because um, once I stamp on these, there will be ink on them, and I like to clean my stamps after I use them. Should I not remove my ink uh it doesn't matter um i just use believe it or not i just use baby wipes ah so those i don't have yeah um, so i should probably invest in that that's probably a cheaper uh, now i got it's... this one it's called stays on all-purpose stamp cleaner and usually i use this for my rubber stamps but um, i'm a neat freak when it comes to these things so once i use the stamp and i'm done with it i like to clean them off so. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, it's just that um, the baby wipes are much less expensive alternative uh, to get brand rather than brand um, remover. Yep. So I think uh, that'll be my next frontier uh, for ink removal. That is mainly – keep that because that's good for uh, true pigment ink or if you forget, and you, which you won't probably, obviously um, – or, or if you get and it dries and you need to take it off, that's when a solvent base like that is best. Um, All but, I have uh, is pigment ink, so <laughs> yeah. that's why we're going with these. Yeah, this is the brand that I use. This is Colorbox, which is the second uh, most popular brand ah. uh, of pig pigment ink. Okay. Um, and the thing I like about this one, yeah, Lisa says she just uses water and an old washcloth. Absolutely. A lot uh, of it depends like on the... This Oh, go ahead. The thing I like about this particular pad is that it's a raised pad. Mm -hmm. um, so you can use it like this as well uh, to ink your, your stamp because it's raised rather than those pads that are, are flush yep. with the base. So um, that's why I like this particular brand. Cool. So you're saying? I was saying um, every so often I'll get a ink, an ink pad. and it, it, Not so much the stamp abilities or the Sukuneko. Those ones are pretty reliable. But if you use a cheap one, 
it tends to not remove the ink very well. So um, in that case, the ink remover does uh, does help. Uh, yes. Not to not to disparage it, but I, I have found this Studio G ink to be um, that type. So. I've tried washing it off and, you know, I've tried, uh, Lisa, to your point, I've tried the washcloth and warm water and um, it doesn't do much. So a lot of it depends on the type of ink that you use and the quality of the ink. Ashley says the Instagram keeps serving her uh, an ad for a leather cutting tool. Ooh. No, mine is literally like a tiny knife that has a, a hole in it and you can uh, put it on a necklace. She Um, I haven't seen that, by the way. Oh, um, you will. Now that we're talking about it, she tiny uses knife on necklace. Ink as well. <laughs> Sorry, I've just yeah. I've just spiked the algorithm. Um, now you'll be seeing she a knife used, necklace. She, yeah. Uh, and she uses rubbing alcohol on a rag to clean stamps. I don't think that would harm it, um, Ashley, mm. uh, because those hard set rubber stamps. Um. Uh, Lisa says, for crafting on the go, I don't know what that's in reference to. Um, for the st I think she means for the stamp cleaning. Like if you don't want to carry right. around one of these, um, a washcloth right. and Just warm water, water and a washcloth. Is, is, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's easy to use. Easy peasy. Yep. So this is my stamp block. Uh, you saw me trace this out uh, the other day. Uh, as you can tell, I'm procrastinating <laughs> into cutting this thing That's live. That's okay. But, We're here. But uh, um, uh, Lisa says the knife necklace. Yay. <laughs> Everyone coveting. So. Everybody keeps saying And that's the one that necklace. you're going to be buying soon. The knife necklace is now going to be appearing in all of your feeds yep. because we're talking about it because Instagram listens. So, um, you know, whatever you will it to be, um, it will be on your feed. So knife necklace. Yep. All right. I'm a little scared too, cause I've never used these kind of stamps before. So, uh, but I do feel like this little real mower should be, um, I think this should be green. And I've got this nice rainforest color green ink here. So we're going to try some green. So, so why don't you try some green? <laughs> why don't you? Why don't you try some green? All right. I'm going to try it, man. All right. Godspeed. We'll see how this so goes. So I am jumped in and I am cutting the outline first before... Uh, Nick says it's better. The knife necklace is better than the meat seasoning advertising she keeps getting. Why doesn't this work? And don't forget, you have to do it in reverse because um, the images are going to be in reverse. Yes, I did that. Damn it! It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's um, that's underwhelming. <laughs> Okay. So Frank says, forget the knife necklace, John Deere. You're going to do everything John Deere. Oh, God. No, the tiny knife necklace, I feel like it's going to just... Yeah, it's, it's going to appear now in all of your feeds. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. So as you can see, I am cutting away from me, which is the way that I was taught. Um, and so that's what... And the thing that I hate about this is that you get all these little slivers all over the place. <laughs> Jennifer says that's a block for letterpress originally. It's metal, not rubber. Correct. Yes, it's made out of lead or something. This is actually, I think this is rubber. No, no. Nope, this is also metal. All right, I want to try this. I, I don't know. This is a total crapshoot of an experiment. This may or may not work. She said crap. I did. Okay, so actually, um, that look at that. Look at that little guy. It's like pulling an old car. How cool is that? All right, so this is perfect. This is nice and small. 
And um, this is probably about, I don't know, quarter inch high by an inch and some change. Oh, that's long. called like a car. So that, yeah, this little guy can go on a postcard or something. So I really like this. So this one I will keep. I do like it. So this is just me experimenting and messing around to see how these are going to look once we stamp this them. This says put a cushion underneath. Maybe that could help. Okay, a cushion and underneath. Swans. Yeah. I got paper towel. I think that'll do just fine because they're a little bouncy. Try this again. Hey, Allison, once you try it again. Try it again. All right. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, this is making it a little bit clearer with the paper towel. Cool. Okay, so now I have tow truck pulling this old like hoopty looking car i kind of like this i really you're not like in it. california <laughs> i'm not how do you Hoopties. know how do you know Hoopties. that's what we my friend used to have um an old school caprice it was like a 19 oh 70 something caprice and we called it her hoopty it was wonderful <laughs> it was a wonderful car now, what is a hoopty? Is that one of the ones that are like low riders? Like, yeah, like one of these little dudes. But of course, like it would have hydraulics, I'm sure. Like a proper hoopty would have like hydraulics and like a kit and like stuff on it. Ground effects and stuff. And those are the ones that bounce up and down, right? To the music? Yes. Oh, I got to show okay, you guys cool. this. Look at this. This is not a clown for the, for the record. I think this is this is reminiscent of like First Nations artwork. And I'm a big fan of First Nations artwork. So this one caught my eye too. For reference, there was a clown. I will tell you, there was a clown in that batch. There were two clowns. There was one, it was head to toe. I did not buy it. And there was a smaller one and he had like the most grotesque expression on his face and it was just his face. And I'm like, I can't buy this. It's going to, it's like, it'll upset people. <laughs> so. I did not buy the clown. Uh, Either clown. No, okay. <laughs> no clowns. No clowns allowed. I was gonna say I was gonna sing that Lisa Lisa song, Head to Toe. Oh dude, Cult Jam. They actually just came on the radio the other day when I was driving around. And there's the earworm. All right, so this is uh, an interesting stamp. Can you just take a look at this one? You can actually see all the detail on it. Check that out. First Nations artwork. I think that's what that's supposed to be. All right, so I like that one. Let's see what other kind of trouble we can cook up here. Ooh. You can't see it, but this guy is a trippy looking sun or maybe a sunflower. I don't know, but I know a lot of people put the time and temperature and the weather on their postcard. And this little guy is, is pretty small. So this might make a, an interesting postcard stamp. So I'm going to try him out as well. For all you post crosses out there, I'm always interested. Do you? like that stuff on your postcards the you know the weather reports and the fahrenheit or celsius and all that stuff let me know i do i Swan love says, getting uh, that. goofy looking face look at that yeah, these are trippy i love these little stamps these she said trippy they're fun and trippy They are. And even the, you know, even the ghost image comes out kind of cool too. A little faded, but still looks kind of cool. Snail mail for Zoe joined and Heidi joined. Hello. Yeah, Swan, it's a, it's a very goofy looking face. I agree. I can't, yeah, I cannot tell if this is supposed to be a sun Wearing sunglasses? Is this a 
like a lion. I don't know what this is. I don't know if you guys can see how closely you can see that, but it, uh, it's unusual. So that's... Swan says she only puts weather on the card when people ask for it in their profile. Ah. Oh, Frank says those stamps look like they're uh, made to build a totem. Yes, this one in particular does. That's why I thought this one was maybe First Nations artwork, like that type of style. So looks like it, maybe. I don't know. Now, when you say First Nation, is that particular tribe is that just a generic term for native americans uh pacific what do you mean pacific northwest okay uh there are there Got is it. Okay. at least one tribe up in the pacific northwest that um google it sometime if you want to see examples of it um no that's what i did yeah. i i thought it that's might have been where you're going i just didn't know if it was if a particular a particular period or particular tribe um so that's what that's what i was asking I was. I believe that interested. is. Yeah, I believe that is the tribe. Um, so. Because I'm not looking at you at all. So uh, I am self absorbed in my own project. Oh, no, that's totally fine. Well, I am self absorbed yeah. in my project. And there we are. This one is some kind of automotive polish. So I don't know why I am really digging these old school um, advertising stamps. Very old school. And uh, so far, Lisa, that um, concept of putting something squishy or bouncy underneath like these paper towels is working really well. So it's helping the stamp because it's so rigid and flat, it's helping it make more contact. Ho oh, ho ho, yes. Look at that. It's like an oil can or something. Those are cool. Yeah, I, it's funny. This is the most fun I have had with, like, with um, any kind of a stamp, rubber or otherwise, in a very, very long time. I used to dread stamping things. I don't know why. So Heidi, yes, those were old letterpress uh, printing blocks that she got at an antique uh, sale this weekend. Nan says those are super cool letterpress letterpress blocks. Yeah, I have never, like I said, I've never seen these out in the wild before, and maybe maybe they were around, but I just never paid attention to them. Um, and maybe because I wasn't quite See, now, so now that you're a crafty, crafty person, you're starting to look at other. Yes. Yeah. Cause uh, like a, a year ago I'd have been like, eh, stamps, boring and like move on. But this time I went, Ooh, I could make something with these. And so, yeah, it's like a whole nother level. That's the exciting part to me. Yeah. I'm going to try this again with my sponginess underneath of my paper towel. So here it is, the real mower, and let's see how this does. It might just be this stamp, but it was not making contact in the center, so. Ha ha, okay, I think we solved that one. Thank you, Lisa, look at this. So this is what the real mower is supposed to look like. Ain't that cool? Russell, are you looking? Let me see. Look it. <laughs> are you looking? Oh, that is cool. Usually I do not demand attention, but this is just too damn cool of a stamp to pass up. Just look at that. I love it. Yeah, I like that I'm one. I'm super excited. Okay. <laughs> Cannot contain my excitement for these stamps. Okay. And may I ask a via the... the what? You know, that's what they always ask on the antique roadshow when people bring in their antiques. How much did you pay for that? And then they tell you it's worth, you know, a dollar and you pay like 50. Um, I think I paid, it was 20 for the whole lot of them. She, I, I, I negotiated down with the lady. So. And how many did you get? 
uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of them. That's a good price. I, I didn't think it was too bad. And yeah, it's like $2 a piece, right? And to be honest, this was only the second weekend that they were doing this outdoor show. Um, and it was, you know, I think a lot of the, the vendors were eager to move product. So she, you know, the pricing was fairly reasonable compared to other years that I've been there. So, yeah. I think you did quite well. I, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. And then there's, uh, there's, there's actually four other ones over here. Um, I cannot wait to try. I two think we them, converted her. Two of them have steak. One of them has frankfurters on them. And the other one looks like a children's stamp. It's Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater. You can't really see it too well. But um, that is the inverse. No, actually, it, my camera is backwards. So it's probably the right way that you guys are looking at it. So try these. I'm going to do the hot dog one, I think. Let's see. It says new dinner size Swift's premium tender frankfurters. Look for this band. Does anyone remember the hot dogs that had the paper band on them? Nope. Okay. Well, and I don't know. Maybe that was a an upstate New York thing. I don't know. Maybe. You never know. Oh, cool. Look at that little guy. Yeah, it was the hot dog and it had like a paper band around it. <laughs> Frank's like, sometimes the cigar is just a cigar. Agreed, agreed. Nope, this says Frankfurter, so... Is this that a Bill Clinton joke, this a is, reference? I, 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 I maybe, maybe. I was too busy being self-absorbed and stamping to catch it, though. Well, I'm so slow-witted that uh, I probably could have gone all week and not realized... <laughs> Yeah, these things are are just cool. So, yeah, old school advertisement. Today I learned that I have this new obsession. Who knew? Swift. Next is going to be Beanie Babies. No. That's what's next. Actually, during my travels the other day, I saw a Beanie Baby tree. It was a piece of wood that looked kind of like a coat rack, but um, it was just a straight stick. And they had these loops of rope, or look like a uh, nylon pieces of clothesline looped and tied and affixed to this thing up and down. And you would just take a Beanie Baby and stick it through the, like, uh, say this is the loop. You would take your Beanie Baby and you would stick it through. And it was a Beanie Baby tree. And I looked at it and I said, oh my God, that has got to be the most useless, frivolous thing I have ever seen in an antique shop. But yet... There it was. It was for sale. It sounded like, you know, Beanie Baby nooses. Kind of. I'm like, oh, this is taking a That's dark scary. Time. I will say I was rather disappointed. In I'm just what? letting you know. In what? That Pepito didn't know the Macarena. Do you have any idea how hard it is to contort your hand inside of a mouse puppet? <laughs> well, you need to work on it because you can't play... <laughs> You I'm can't be Mexican. Children. You can't play Mex be Mexican and play the Macarena and not know the dance. That's all I'm saying. Like, yeah. Like, pick a different piece of music then. I had pick this. Like, Cucaracha or something. I had this vision for Pepito, <laughs> and like, I tried it, and it just, it was an epic fail today. It didn't work. Ugh. Oh, and in other news, here is Swift's Select Round Steak.
Let's see. So you're getting a lot of props on Pepita, though. You know, um, it, it's been interesting. It's been interesting. And it, I, I always get the idea to go do something with that when I'm supposed to be doing something else like responsible or important. I'm like, hey, I know the puppet could be doing this. And then, you know, random idea pops in my head. Jilly Lynn, Jill Lynn joined. Welcome. So what I have done is I've done all the outlines and now I'm going to start removing the striped areas so that what's left on the block will be this solid uh, and that is, that is what will be imprinted uh, when I print. Cool. So uh, Ashley says, mmm, steak. Right? Here's another one. This one's a porterhouse. The first one I did was a round steak. Hey, Anna. Ho oh. ho. This is the food Hour, Anna, you, you've come in the wrong part of the uh, broadcast. Look at old school advertising letter block. Letter print? Letter block? What are these called? Letter press. Letter press. Letter, letter press. press blocks. There you go. Porterhouse steak. There you are. Because guess which one of our viewers used to own a letter press? Ooh, I'm going to say either Frank or Nan. It was Frank. Aha, I knew it. I knew I was close. And Jennifer does letter press at the uh, Center for Book Arts. So letter press is still a thing? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Ah. Except they're doing it differently these days in that they're doing a lot of people... Because they don't have to, you don't have to have the type set anymore. Mm -hmm. You can get polymer plates, which are just like hard rubber plates, uh, with your text inserted on it, and then you print from that. Now, interesting. But beforehand, you needed like a whole like letter press, printing press, right? Correct. Well, you still have to have the printing press. Ah. It's just that what's changed is rather than set your type, which is what you actually have, you have the type blocks. I'm like, does Reading right? Rainbow have an old episode on this so I could understand the process? Go to YouTube. Take a look. It's in a book. Oh, Nan, uh, Nan, uh, Nan says that she learned on a letter press. I was going to say, I was, I was hoping she was going to say, I too learned by watching Reading Rainbow. I'm like, yes. Okay. Yes, this is how things are learned. Okay, never mind. Never mind. All right, I'm scared to pull this one up because there is so much freaking detail. Uh, oh, Pam is oh, joined. Awesome. Welcome, Pam. Look, it's Peter, Peter, Pumpkin Eater. Look at that. The detail on these is crazy. Oh, I like that one. This actually wouldn't be bad for my fall pumpkin motif postcards that I'm going to be doing. Hmm. Nick says she learned a lot from reading Rainbow as a kid. I learned how crayons were made. Did you guys ever watch the Crayon Factory episode? It was top notch. I never saw Reading Rainbow. You can actually, I think. Lisa said that she loved that one. Yes. And you can get the episodes, I think, on uh, Netflix. They're still there. There are many episodes. Oh, yes. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I should uh, I should YouTube the whole process of, of letter press printing. It's my new fascination. See, this is what I do, Russ, because I'm a Gemini. I go down these rabbit holes of interest and I'm like, woo, this looks interesting. And then a week later, I'm like, yay, I'm going to make a postcard now. So, you know, <laughs> that's what because um, that's what we do. Nick says that. 
Nick says she watched some, I'm assuming reading Rainbow, on Amazon. Still magical. It is. It is. It has not lost its magic. I can confirm yeah. that. And Swan says that she actually watched Reading Rainbow as an adult. I watch it with my kids. Like, does that count? It does count. Now, how do you say that word? A-D-U-L-T. Is it adult or adult? Adult. Or is it situational? You say uh, adult? I say adult. Adult. Like, are there any adults in this craft hour? Oh, no, never mind. There's not. <laughs> there See, aren't. I, I learned, uh, my speech therapist was from, uh, from England. And so I still do a lot of uh, British pronunciations. So, like, I still say pastel instead of pastels. Like a pastel pink. Mm-hmm. Um, and I still say um, aluminum instead of aluminum. Does anybody know what this stamper is? Stamp it. Let us see. <laughs> Just stamp it. Oh, I know what it is. That was a that was oh, a okay. rhetorical question. I oh, know what it. I'm stamping. Okay, I don't. Schedule. Yes. Check them out, guys. Hot stamps right here. You guys see this? I can't tell what it is. It looks like a pair of underwear. It is. It's my underwear oh, okay. stamp. It's tidy whities okay. Tidy whities Okay. It is. But interestingly, now that I'm using the rubber stamper, I have gone away from my, um, my copper and lead stampers. And no, I have not licked the lead. Um, I can now go on a flat surface and make some... Super awesome undies. Look at those. <laughs> yeah, we're having fun here. Too much fun. I was going to say, why are you licking your undies? Too much fun. So Lisa's making fun of me because I say schedule instead of schedule. <laughs> so I didn't know that your speech therapist was British. That is super interesting to me. Yeah. And like I always say... Um, um, Rubber, like rub out the answers rather than eraser. Fee's here. Fee will understand me. She'll understand all the funny words that I say. <laughs> hey, Fee. They're making fun of me because I say schedule, schedule and pastel. If I stamp these into a paper towel, I won't have to clean them as much. Uh, Frank says he thought the negative space was cutouts. In yours? No. In mine? Oh, I don't know. I'm curious. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. I don't know. What are you talking about, Frank? Nobody knows. Um, reveal yourself. I do not know what you are talking about. <laughs> are you talking about my stamp or are you talking about her stamp? <laughs> I forgot your name there for a second. I was like about her. My you know that stamp. you know that person that's here like almost every night. I don't know. We don't know her name. It's been it's been a long day. Frank her is on the stamps. underwear stamp. Her yeah. stamps. Yeah. How about uh, you? Fill Frank in, is on the underwear stamp. How about you fill in the negative space on the underwear stamp? <laughs> wow. Hey, my, Phil, we're talking about underwear. Help me out here. As, <laughs> as my neighbor would say, woo! Woo! Because that's how they scream. Yeah. I don't know why they do this, but that's like they're, they're genetically coded to scream this way. My next door neighbor, I, I don't understand her. She's like, woo! I'm like, oh my God, why do you? Are these are the cornhole neighbors? Yes. I'm like, why are you doing this? Why do you make this sound? It's I, I just have to laugh every time I say cornhole. It just makes it just makes me laugh to talk in, ge in genteel language. We're talking well, cornhole. The first yeah, time I know? ever heard about cornhole, I thought they were being facetious. I'm like, I'm sorry, you're what hole? I'm like, yeah, what? what yeah. Is this is this a joke? Is this an actual thing? Turns out cornhole really is a thing. Yeah. Well, it really is a thing, but now we're talking about a game, though. But then, I, but then it was my, my a friend of mine who um, came from Ohio was like, "Oh yeah, cornholes everywhere up there." And I'm like, "How has how have I never known about this as a thing?" Yeah, I never knew about it until I did summer stock in uh, North Carolina. Hmm. 
So, um, any suggestions? And then, they turn it, then, then they turn it into a verb. We're going to go cornholing. I'm like, no, that's totally different. That's something totally different. Or you different. could, like, adverb it like, yo, that's totally cornholed. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Does uh, does anybody have any recommendations on cleaning a lead stamp? Same thing. Nothing different. Samesies. Yeah. Okay. Ashley says they call it bago down in bago? Uh, Arkansas. Man, they got different down names for things there. Just saying. We are talking Arkansas here, so. Yeah, at the other Kansas. I used to make so many people mad by calling it our Kansas. When I was little, I couldn't say Wisconsin. I called it Wisconsin because I didn't didn't know any better. Yeah, see, they clean up pretty well. I sure hope this isn't cursed. Please don't. It still looks like a freaking clown to me. Please don't be cursed. It is not. It is. It is probably. I know uh, it's not. I know it's not, but it's just, it just. It's First Nations, Pacific Northwest, man. I, I know, Ashley. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get that reaction from you. My name is not she Ashley. She gets upset when I call it Arkansas. I'm not Ashley. No, I was talking to Ashley online. <laughs> she I'm made a playing. comment. I'm just messing with you. I know. It's been a long day for all of us. It has. It has. Long day. Mm -hmm. Is that a Beatles song? Long Day's Night? Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Hard Day's Night. Yes, Hard Day's is. Night. There we go. Thank you. Yes, it is. Somehow, cleaning the stamps is almost as fun as using them. I don't know why, but there's something really gratifying about seeing all the ink. My, oh, my, office. yeah, I was going to just beat me to it. My OCD um, makes me really like to clean stamps. Like, yes, look, they're clean again. They're usable again. I do have one regret, though, and that is... What's that? Um, when you didn't I was, buy more. No, there was one particular one that I was going to buy, and then I didn't buy, and um, then we left. And then I was thinking about it all afternoon, and it was a, it looked like a vintage 1960s, maybe 1970s McDonald's stamp with the golden arches on it. And then I thought, I don't know, that's just getting, maybe that's just getting too specifically commercial. I kind of like some but of she would probably, she would probably charge you more because uh make, you know those kind of specific advertisings people want yes so yeah i walked away from that one going eh, i don't know so i like see if i have any ones. remote interest i'll get it because that will drive me crazy yeah and see then i walked away from it like would i have really used it no i probably would have used it once and gone look i made golden arches and then i would have just walked away so now you guys get to watch me clean them how exciting But yeah, for real, some of the details on these things are just sick. Like they're so incredibly detailed. Well, the thing that the thing that's interesting to me to all that is that, you know, um, you can get an, an embossed image with that. So think about that pressed into paper, and having you know the, the the printing press go down on it and create that image as well. So not only do you get an inked image, but you also get an uh, debossed image. Cindy Snail Mail joined. Welcome. Hey, Cindy. And for those of you who just joined uh, a bit ago or recently, uh, we are testing out all these funky old stamps that I found at an antique show. These are old letterpress stamps. Here's a real mower. Here's a Frankfurter <laughs> round stake. And we got your Porter House down here. And let's see what else. An oil can. Um, this looks like First Nations artwork. A trippy looking. You had a car song. too, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, look at this guy. Yep. The um, 
tow truck pulling the long car. Old school car. Look at that. And uh, we have uh, Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater here. So that's the one I like all of them. That's my favorite. Mm-hmm. It's Peter Peter. And then Undies. He said Peter. <laughs> Undies. Because Undies. I actually got these. Okay, so for real, I got these off of Etsy a while back. And I thought they were funny. So. Woo. So we're just trying to clean the ink off these guys now. So far, the stays on is working pretty well. So, And I did use pigment ink just because I, for some reason, decided to be fancy yep. just now. Fee says those are beautiful, Allison. Thank you. Yeah, I was super excited to find these. These were a fun find. So now when I go antiquing for the future, I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for more of these. Oh, whoa. And I actually just got a ghost image um, cleaning the stamp here. And you see I got a lot of the purple off. It looks like I got a ghost image of some of the newsprint that was originally on this. There's a little bit of newsprint caked around the corners. So I guess it wasn't completely clean when I bought it, but that's okay. That's okay. Gives it character. Yeah, that is a cool thing. So here is where I am. I'm furrowing out all the pieces that I don't want to print. Um, and that I'm trying to do is I'm make, trying to make sure that these channels that I am cutting are lower than the part that I want to ink. So this is the part that I want ink on. And these are the parts that I'm cutting away so, so that they don't ink, uh, which is the part that I'm hot. So, um, but that's what I'm working on. So I've got about a quarter of the way. I've got all the outline done, and now I'm just clearing away all the stripy edges, all, all the stripy parts. So is that the negative image or the? See, this is this is where I get confused. Yeah, um, me too. Yeah. So I'm going to be printing the positive because the negative is the part that I've put. Yes, I'm printing the positive. Okay, so the negative would be the lines of the rose or the flower. Correct. Okay. So this is the one I practiced on this weekend. So uh, this is oh, the wow. reverse. So this is the reverse. So these are the lines that I left raised, and I cut out all the other parts. Yep. And so when I print the lines, I'm printing the negative. And when I'm printing the interior part, that's I'm printing the positive. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense to me. So when it looks like a stencil, you are using the negative. When you're using the parts that aren't printing the positive. Uh, looking good. Thank you. Um, Jim says we have five minutes. Five minute warning. Well, thank you. Thank you. Jim is our trusty timekeeper always. Thank you very much, Jim. So I'm going to take a break from what I'm doing so that I can talk to all you folks out there. So, uh, and this is from the heart, so take it for what it is. But uh, this hour has been a saving grace for me um, throughout this whole pandemic. So uh, I do thank you from the bottom of my heart for participating and for joining us. It just, the world seems a little closer and a little better uh, for all of you in it and because we're all together and we've built this community together. And so I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for continuing to, to visit and to meet. Uh, it's like I said, it's been a saving grace for me. So uh, I thank you uh, for participating. And Allison, I thank you for yeah. thinking of the idea and for inviting us as well. Yeah, so, it's, it's um, totally. I mean, this is like this is like open craft hour. You know, I like yeah. the, I like the openness of it and anything goes really. And um, even weird cheesy tacky humor like mine <laughs> it's all fair game so you know yeah well it's just like i said i've said this before it's just, yeah it it feels the world feels a little less alone you know yeah and so absolutely. Uh, and so uh and then you know this is referencing that um i just he loves the community we've developed you know uh if you listen to um frank's latest podcast you know, uh, 
our future are the children and that uh, it's nice to know that that we are developing these people who these young people who are who are who are developing communications through writing and uh, reaching out to people that they don't know and so um it's a beautiful uh, the written so word that's is a another, beautiful thing man bring it back yeah bring it all back Absolutely. And I uh, need someone to resend the email. Send it to my email address if you have it, uh, that list of all of the contact information. I can't seem to find it. I think that Instagram hides all of all of these messages after a while. I can't seem to find that one, that, that email or that message thread that listed all the people's favorites and contact information because I want to send out cards. My next wave of cards are to the group, so I want to... I'll be able to send cards to everyone. Right so if on. you have that readily available, if you can just cut and paste that to me, that'd be fantastic. You have the last two minutes, my dear. So I do. Again, you you do. guys want to watch me clean a stamp? <laughs> no, seriously. Thank you, guys. And, you know, for me, too, it's like um, it is my little crafty cave of time that I get every night. And... Uh, no, I, you guys have, have definitely helped propel me into some new projects and some new things that otherwise I wouldn't have, A, known about um, or maybe would have had the courage to try on my own. But since I know you guys are out there, um, it's also helpful because I know even if my craft projects don't quite go as, as expected or as planned, uh, I know if nothing else, I am entertaining you guys. So um, that's fun too. So it's it's been it's been a lovely um, it's been a lovely use of time at night and, um, it's been, I think it's been really, it's been time well spent. So yeah, all good. All good. Thank you guys for joining. And, um, I think we've got what, like one minute left, um, for anybody that might be joining out there that's new, we are here Monday through Friday, uh, 10 PM Eastern. And, um, I do believe I'm looking at my calendar here. I do believe that the bingo is going to be next Wednesday. A week from this Wednesday. Crazy. And uh, so we're going to devote that entire hour. And Bacone, I think, is he wearing a costume or not? Yes, he is. All right. So he'll be dressed up and um, he'll be pulling our numbers and Russ will be helping to call. And between Russ and I, we'll facilitate um, the giving out of the... Um, cheesy paper mailable items that will be mailed out um, as the prizes so and if this all goes well then we can do it again next month and um you know make it a monthly thing or something don't forget star wars lenticular postage stamps from spain is one of the prizes oh wow see see and uh i've got some stickers and i've got some uh some scrap paper and some card card mat paper all sorts of cool things so uh, stay tuned for more details on that. And uh, in the meantime, guys, have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow. Probably more stamping. And uh, are you going to finish that tomorrow, Russ, do you think? I'm going to try. Cool. All right. Well, we'll be back tomorrow. Have a good night, cool. guys. Bye. Good night, everyone. See ya. Bye.